Let's begin with the elections. Uh, the word that uh, rolls off uh, everyone's tongue is uh, historic, historic election. And I agree with that. It was a historic election. Uh, to have a black family in the White House is a, a momentous achievement. In fact, it's historic in a broader sense. The two Democratic uh, candidates were uh, an African-American and a woman, uh, both remarkable achievements. If you go back, say, 40 years, uh, it would have been unthinkable. So something's happened to the country in 40 years. And what's happened to the country, which is we're not supposed to mention, uh, is that there was uh, extensive uh, and very uh, constructive activism in the 1960s, which had an aftermath. So the feminist movement mostly developed in the 70s, the solidarity movements in the 80s, and on till today. And the activism did civilize the country. Uh, it's an important achievement. The country's a lot more civilized than it was 40 years ago, and the historic achievements uh, illustrate it. And that's also a lesson for what's next. Uh, what's next will depend on whether the same thing happens. Uh, changes and progress uh, very rarely are gifts from above. They come out of uh, struggles from below. Uh, and it's up to the answer to what's next uh, depends on people like you. Nobody else can answer it. It's not predictable. Uh, the, uh, in some ways, the election, uh, the election was surprising in some respects. Uh, going back to my bad prediction, uh, if the financial crisis hadn't taken place at the moment that it did, if it had been delayed a couple of months, I suspect that prediction would have been correct. But not speculating, uh, one thing surprising about the election is that it wasn't a landslide. Uh, by the usual criteria, you'd expect the opposition party to win in a landslide under conditions like the ones that exist today. Uh, the incumbent president uh, for eight years was so unpopular that his own party uh, couldn't mention his name and had to pretend to be opposing his policies. Uh, the, uh, he presided over one, maybe the, the worst record for uh, ordinary people in uh, uh, post-war history in terms of job growth, uh, real wealth, and so on. Uh, the, uh, he, he, uh, just about everything the administration has touched has turned into a disaster. Uh, countries uh, reached the lowest level of uh, standing in the world that it's uh, ever had. Uh, and uh, the economy was tanking. Uh, several recessions are going on, not just the one on the front pages, the financial recession, but uh, there's also a recession in the real economy, uh, the productive economy. Under circumstances, and the people know it, so 80% of the population say the country's going in the wrong direction. Uh, the, about 80% say uh, the government does not work for the benefit of the people. It works for the few and the special interests. Uh, startling 94% uh, uh, complain that the government doesn't pay any attention to the public will and on like that. Uh, under conditions like that, you'd expect a landslide for the opposition, almost whoever they are. And there wasn't one, which does raise some questions. So one might ask why there wasn't a landslide. And that goes off in an interesting direction. Uh, the, uh, uh, in other respects, the outcome was pretty familiar. Uh, so uh, once again, the election was essentially bought. Uh, nine out of 10 of the uh, victors uh, outspent their opponents. Uh, McCain, Obama, of course, outspent McCain. The, uh, the, uh, if you look at the, we don't have final records yet from the final results, but they're probably gonna be pretty much like the preliminary results a couple of months ago, which showed that both Obama and McCain were getting uh, the bulk of their financing from uh, the financial institutions and for Obama, uh, law firms, uh, which means essentially lobbyists. Uh, that's for, it was about over a third a few months ago. Probably final results will probably be the same. Uh, the, uh, and uh, there is a, f the, fund, the distribution of funding has over time been a pretty good predictor of what policies will be like. 
for those of you who are interested, there's very good uh, scholarly work on this by Tom Ferguson at UMass Boston, what he calls the investment theory of politics, which predicts the, uh, which argues essentially that uh, elections are moments when uh, groups of investors coalesce and invest to control the state uh, and has quite uh, substantial predictive success, gives some suggestion as to what's likely to happen. So that part's uh, familiar. Uh, the, uh, what the future is, as I say, depends on people like you. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, response to the election was interesting and instructive. It, uh, it kept pretty much to the um, soaring rhetoric, to borrow the cliche that was the major theme of the election. Uh, the election was described as uh, an extraordinary uh, display of democracy, uh, a miracle that could only happen in America, and on and on. Uh, much more extreme in Europe even than here. Uh, there's some accuracy in that, if we keep to the West. So if we keep to the West, yes, it's probably true that it couldn't have happened anywhere else. Uh, uh, Europe is much more racist than the United States, and uh, you wouldn't expect anything like that to happen. On the other hand, if we look at the world, it's not that remarkable. Uh, so let's take, say, the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere, uh, Haiti and Bolivia. Uh, in Haiti, there was uh, an election in 1990, uh, which really was an extraordinary display of democracy, much more so than this. Uh, in Haiti, the, there were uh, uh, grassroots movements, popular movements that developed in the slums and in the hills, which nobody was paying any attention to. And they managed, even without any resources, to sweep into power their own candidate, uh, a uh, populist priest, Jean Bertrand Aristide. Uh, that's a victory for democracy, when popular movements can organize and set programs and pick their candidate and put them into office, which is not what happened here, of course. Uh, the, uh, when Obama did uh, organize a great, a large number of people, and many enthusiastic people, uh, what's called uh, in the press, uh, Obama's army. Uh, but the army is uh, supposed to take instructions not to implement, to I introduce, develop uh, uh, programs and call on its own candidate to implement them. Uh, that's critical. If the army keeps to that condition, uh, nothing much will change. If it, on the other hand, goes the way activists did in the 60s, a lot could change. One of the choices that has to be made. Uh, however, so that's Haiti. Uh, of course, that didn't last very long. A couple of months later, there was a military coup, a uh, period of terror. I won't go through the whole record, but uh, up to the present, uh, the traditional torturers of Haiti, France, and the United States uh, have made sure that uh, there won't be a victory for democracy there. It's a miserable story, contrary to many illusions. Uh, take the second poorest country, Bolivia. Uh, they had an election in 1990, uh, 2005 that's uh, almost unimaginable in the West, uh, certainly here, anywhere. Uh, the person elected into office was indigenous. That's the most oppressed population in the hemisphere, that is, those who survived, uh, is a poor peasant. How did he get in? Uh, well, he, uh, he got in because uh, there were, again, a mass popular movements uh, which uh, elected their own representative. And they are the source of the programs, which are serious ones. It's, uh, they're real issues, and people know them. Uh, control over resources, uh, cultural rights, uh, social justice, and so on. Uh, furthermore, the election was just an event that was a particular stage in a long continuing struggle, a lot before and a lot after. There was a day when people pushed the levers, uh, but that's just an event in ongoing popular struggles, very serious ones. 